John here guys and today we're talking about building your own frame. Jarvis, you up? For you, sir, always. I'd like to open a new project file index as Mark II. Shall I store this on the Stark Industries central database? That's right. How do you design, manufacture, send off and get your frame so that you can hold it in your hand now on this channel i don't always have the ability to do all the things that are very cool in this hobby like design your own frame design your own canopy design your own accessories like this axi holder that i just printed so this was actually all done by miguel a uh, senior member of the fpv community here in houston he goes by the pilot name el profe and so he is actually one of the ones that i've learned quite a bit from in this hobby he's been in it a few years longer than my three years or so and so he's always happy to help people tune to help people fly to help new people to set up races do time trials to sit there watch you fly through his goggles analyze your techniques and give you tips and so it's all about that ability to pay it forward and so when we get to the edge of my knowledge and my skill set that's when i'm going out to the community to find out from people who know better how to do it so i'm going to show some of the pictures of the design along the way this is a sandwich style frame and it takes inspiration from a few of the existing frames on the market today that you may uh spot two or three of those things that he drew inspiration from had a little bit of uh Help from our friend Mayday in town, getting the final touches on this. Very cool, has like a little mini mohawk fin right there. And uh, definitely, uh, now, so one of the things that he told me he did when he was designing this frame was he wanted the ability to run, you know, full size stacks. He was done by 20 by 20. I think this is actually the second or third frame he's designed uh, in town from the ground up. It's using four press, press nuts in the center right here to hold the arms in place. And I'll show some pictures of the diagrams of how those arms actually fit together. The arms are quite long. They go all the way into the center and meet in the middle right here so that they can stay very rigid. This is a very rigid carbon fiber. It's five mils. I think he's actually going to make a revision to this. And he said he's going to bring it down to four and a half mils. You can see that the standoff... Um, width is staggered it's slightly thinner in the front than it is in the back that's an interesting design decision right there has some gummies built into this layer that your stack's going to attach to um, he likes to use these very thick dog bone style standoffs which i can tell just by handling them are much stronger than the other ones and uh, i've been test printing this axi holder which is going to fit on these rear standoffs just like this and we'll hold um, the axi antenna in there like that. Um, and so you can see, I still haven't even cleaned up this print, but uh, it's cool. Like, so definitely always make friends with the people in your FPV community because they can help you tune, they can help you learn how to fly, they can help you, you know, even if you have the skills to do something like this, which I don't have, I happen to have a 3D printer. Um, so he can give me some of those designs I can test print them from him. Now, one of the things that I don't advise you to try to do unless you are very experienced is to print a nylon canopy so we have this printed by one of the top uh you know canopy printers there's two major ones in the hobby that you're always going to want to go to there's uh phoenix 3d solutions chris griffin over there and then there's also uh <laughs> brain 3d solutions so those are the two big ones uh, that i would suggest that you go with uh, for if you need to get something printed in nylon printing nylon is not as easy as printing pla or tpu like this is at your house and so you have to be careful to get it just right so let the experts do it it's worth paying the 15 or 20 dollars um, so the nice thing about when you have these frames cut, you can get them cut from CNC Madness, uh, which is a place up in Canada. A lot of the frame designers here stateside use them. They ship fairly fast. They're, they do good work. This is cut very nice and very smooth and very well. You can design decide on the type of carbon that you want, the layer thickness. There's a variety of options that you can choose from when you send it off. Now, one of my first questions to him after I saw this frame, which you know I thought it was awesome, um was what's the cost 
you know, and the cost ends up being about 60 to $70. So he didn't really save a ton. Maybe if you started to, you know, generate a ton of these, but he didn't do this for resale. He just likes to be able to have full control over every aspect of his quads. Miguel is known for extremely clean builds. So if you've enjoyed the builds on my channel, I have taken a lot of advice from him over the years on build techniques. I'm always watching what he's doing. And then of course, he's always able to advise in the field when he sees that you show up for the first few times with junky cold solder joints, uh, which is a no-no. So um, yeah, very, very cool. Awesome job on this, Miguel. I've seen it in action. It flies quite well. And uh, you know, I personally like to just buy my frame off the shelf and go, but I, I think it's an awesome skill to learn Fusion 3D, learn how to do all these drawings. Um, but I, you know, I'm pretty familiar with editing software, which I know isn't the easiest to use, you know, photo and really more video editing software. So maybe I can learn this too and start designing some of my own parts. So awesome job. Very cool. If you ever wondered, you know, how long it takes, uh, Miguel said it didn't take too long for him to learn how to do Fusion 3D. I really like that he's left a dedicated spot in there for the battery strap to go that's handy he's left a little spot at the back so that you can zip tie your power leads and keep them secure most of us are running three screws on our frame so he's went ahead and eliminated that fourth screw hole to add a little bit of extra protection and save a little bit of weight and material and uh, he added a couple of little holes at the front to secure wires or other things like that this axi holder is actually a dual purpose that he designed there's room for a capacitor back here too so his builds are really really cool i'll try to get you a picture of one of these what one of these uh completed builds look like so that you guys can see it so what do you guys think leave a comment down below if you've ever thought about designing your own frame or any fpv parts what's your favorite part of doing builds is it assembling the frame soldering it all up and if you know how to use any of the software and have some cool files, do you upload them to Thingiverse? Do you want to sell them? Do you just want to make it so that you have something unique when you go out to the field? This frame doesn't have a name, so post in the comments what you think the name should be. I don't think you're going to be able to get your hands on one because he's really just making these for himself. But who knows? Maybe if we bug him enough. Thanks, guys.